fascinating character and in belated response to Jim McKay's question, the general reaction of foreign swimmers to American dominance here has been a healthy acceptance of the fact that the United States has the best overall swimming program in the world. If that sounds jingoistic, so be it. It has the added advantage of being true. In lane one, Peter Ward, 21 years old, from North York, Ontario, Canada. He is an outsider with virtually no international experiences. One of the surprises of this morning's trials. Not even a member of the Canadian team for the Pan Am Games a year ago, but here he is in an Olympic final. In lane two, Anthony Moss, 19 years old, from New Zealand. He emerged as a strong medal candidate last summer when he finished second to Sergei Pesinko of the Soviet Union in a pre-Olympic meet in this pool. He ranks 11th on the all-time list. In lane three, Pablo Morales, 19 years old, from Santa Clara, California. Earlier in the meet, you saw him lose to Mikhail Gross, but pick up a silver medal in the 100-meter butterfly. He's the former world record holder in that event. In this event, he ranks third all-time, but his best time is more than a second behind the world record held by Mikhail Gross. And here is the man who set the Olympic record in qualifying this morning, who set the world record last year in Rome. He is the dominant figure in the pool here, as I mentioned before, because of his physical presence, because of his unusual personality, and because of his amazing talent. He already has two gold medals and a silver medal, and he has broken two world records in this Olympic Games. And in lane five, Rafael Vidal, 20 years old from Venezuela, the bronze medalist in the Pan Am Games a year ago and number nine on the all-time list. He goes to the University of Florida, where he's a member of the NCAA championship swimming team. Lane six, John Seaman, 17 years old from Queensland, Australia, third in the Commonwealth Games in 1982. A bit of an outsider, but you don't count out any Australian from the medal contention in these games. In lane seven, Tom Ponting, 19 years old from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, better known as a 100-meter butterflyer earlier in his career, but he has emerged now in the 200-meter butterfly after going 158-72 at the Canadian Olympic Trials. In lane eight, this is Patrick Kennedy, 20 years old from the United States, and there's a changing of the guard here. It is because of Kennedy's great performance at the Olympic Trials in finishing second to Morales that the former world record holder in the event and the man who would have been favored to win the gold medal in Moscow, Craig Beardsley, is not here. Beardsley's absence is certainly, for his personal interest, quite lamentable. Morales on the left in lane three, Mikhail Gross on the right in lane four, and Mark Spitz, my instinct is to believe we're about to see another world record for Mikhail Gross. I think that he's really been thinking about this. He's trained for it, and this is the time to do it. One thing about his training habits, I think it's a credit to his ability to know his own body. And maybe some of the coaches should take note and learn from him. He knows what it takes to become a winner, and it's very similar to the training aspects that I use. After a while, you can only listen to your coach so much, and you know what it takes to make your body move through the water as fast as possible in the amount of training that's necessary. And he's mastered that. As they take off, remember that Kyle Gross is known for getting terrific starts. He got a fabulous start, for instance, in the relay the other night when he made up a full body length on Bruce Hayes in the first 10 meters of swimming. Now he has taken the lead over Morales next to him in lane three as they move toward the wall and the 50-meter mark. The Albatross, six feet, seven inches tall, with the wingspan, as we've mentioned, seven and a half feet. He can almost touch the lane ropes, which are eight feet, two and a half inches apart. He touched in first place at 26-28. That's about 15 hundredths of a second over his world record pace of last summer. He has a tremendous dolphin kick. It's an illusion that his feet come out of the water extra high, but it's only because of the length of his body. He breathes every other stroke, but in the prelims, I noticed the last 40 meters, he started to breathe every stroke, and it seemed like he was struggling a little bit. He seems very smooth. Again, that's only an illusion because of his size. It's a flat wall turn. You must breathe and turn with your hands exactly parallel off of the wall. Otherwise, you'd be disqualified. Now, Gross is starting to pick up the pace, but at the 100-meter mark, he was still behind his world record pace, and Morales was very close to him as they came off the wall. Now it looks as though Gross is trying to put a little distance between himself, Morales, and Rafael Vidal in lane five. Those are the three who are in front right now and apparently headed toward medals in this event. Mikhail Gross gunning for his third gold medal of these games. Pablo Morales in the Olympic trials had a very fast last 50 meters. And if he wants to win this race, he's going to have to put on a push right now. Mikhail tied up in the prelims. He's starting to breathe every stroke right now. You can see that perfectly. Morales is still in composure right now, breathing every other stroke, and it seems like he's moved up. 
Drugs well, look just at him. To his left. He he just worried. Worried. He some time. Absolutely. Here comes the doll. Here comes Steven in lane six. This is going to be a horse race. He's Steven dying. is the leader right now. Gross is dying. Steven is about to pull a huge upset in lane six. 17-year-old John Steven of Queensland, Australia, came on in the last 20 meters, and he caught the Kyle Gross and beat him to the wall. The silver medal will go to Gross. The bronze medal will go to Vidal. Pablo Morales was shut out of the medals. What a finishing performance for the men in lanes five and six. Rafael Vidal and most of all, John Sieben. One of the most outstanding upsets in swimming for men at these Olympic Games. He was really hurting in the morning prelims. He was breathing every stroke then in the final 50 meters and, and tonight. Here we can see on a super slow motion, above at the top of the screen is American Pablo Morales. At this point in time, Mikhail Gross of West Germany was in the lead. But on the bottom of the screen was John Sieben of Australia, who in the last final 10 meters put his head down had a tremendous dolphin kick there and drove to the wall right here. The inexperienced swimmer may have taken a short, choppy stroke, but he pushes right into the finish for the first place. And by one one hundredth of a second, I have just noticed John Sieben broke the world record. He broke Mikhail Gross's world record. So I couldn't have been more wrong in saying that we should see another world record from Gross. Instead, we got it from a relative unknown. A 17-year-old from Australia who first received international acclaim at the Commonwealth Games two years ago when he finished third in this event, swam in the pre-Olympic feet in this mool a year ago, but did not win a medal. Right now, he's an Olympic gold medalist and a world record holder and will be back. There are the results of one of the most remarkable upsets in Olympic swimming history. Again, 17-year-old John Sieben, who ranked 25th in the world a year ago, has dropped five seconds since then, and now has a gold medal, a world record, a victory over the most celebrated swimmer here, Mikhail Gross. Let's go down to Diana Nyad. Well, Jim, there are some uh, big smiles from everyone gathered down in the interview booth down here. John, from 25th in the world last year to a very, very outside chance going into the final, you not only upset the favorite gross, but you break the world record. Where did this come from? Oh, I've been training hard for a long time, and it's just been coming and coming. When you qualified this morning, did you think you were a medal possibility? Did, was it in your imagination that you were going to break the world record, win the Olympic gold medal? Uh, this morning I was looking at getting a medal. I didn't really, wasn't looking at winning. I was just hoping to do my best. Well, you did your best. Take a look at the finish of the race here. We've got a, we've got a slow-mo for you coming in. There you are. Tell us what was going through your mind and who you knew where, who was where. I couldn't see anyone. I was just going a hell for leather for the wall. I was just going all out. I didn't see anyone until I stopped and looked around and saw I'd won. It was just great. Well, that has got to be one of the biggest upsets in Olympic swimming history, if not the biggest upset. Uh, I know you Australians like to celebrate and party. Have a good one, and congratulations. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Tenth medal of the Games for the Australian swimmers. Their coach, Terry Buck, deserves an enormous amount of credit. And Sieben is the gold medalist. Gross gets a silver medal. He now has two golds and two silvers. Vidal got the bronze medal. Carl Lewis, take note. Sometimes a heavy workload can come back to haunt you. Gross has swum a lot of races. And now let's go back to Jim McKay in the studio. How about that, Jim? 